Welcome to Haunted Hospitality, Southern Stories Told by Spooky Gingers. I'm Robin. And I'm Zoe. And I have a story for you today. But first, Zoe, how's life? Life is life. She just gave me a thumbs up. Yes. Um, Do you want to elaborate? Sure. So, I know in the last episode, I, like, future projected onto myself. Oh, like, yeah. I was like, oh, how am I going to feel after my 5K? And, well, the answer is tired. Um, so... I got my second vaccine at four, or, yes, thank you for the applause. Um, So I got my second vaccine at, like, five. The appointment was for 4.45, but I was running a little late because there was an accident on the highway to get there. And so I get the shot, and then I immediately come back home because I ended up taking the entire day off of work because I was just, I had too much to do. Mostly editing this podcast. (laughs) Um, And so... the MVP. (laughs) Uh, <laughs> so we edit everything. Yes. Yes, I do. So Thank if, you, Zoe. Yeah. That's why all my embarrassing parts are taken out, but Robin's are left in. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but, um, yes, yeah, so I got my second shot, and then I came back home. I got in my mom's car, and I, we went to Myrtle Beach. Uh, we checked in at the Airbnb and had to drive away around the neighborhood a few times because we couldn't find it. And then we slept after watching the first couple episodes of Modern Family. And I got up at 6 a.m. I got dressed and then I did a 5K and I did it the whole time with my mask completely on. So a lot, they like said like you were allowed to take your mask off once you passed like the start line. Mm-hmm. But the thing is that there were so many people doing the race. Yeah. You're going to be next to somebody the whole entire time. But so I left my mask on the whole entire time. Um, that was and very then, responsible of you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And then, so we walked around the beach, and my mom and I did some kata on the beach. For those who aren't into karate, um, it's like a synchronized movement, uh, or not synchronized, excuse me, choreographed movements of karate, like fight, where you're fighting fake attackers. So we did that on the beach, and that was very hard in the sand. Ooh. And we ended up walking nine miles that day. And, and this is your second day. And the second day is the worst day, folks, after the vaccine. Yes. And so I got home around 4.30. Mm-hmm. I took a shower. And then I laid down in bed. Mm-hmm. And my boyfriend, like, joined me in bed. And he was just playing his Switch. And I was looking over his shoulder. And the next thing I knew, it, and this was at, like, 5 p.m. And then the next thing I knew, it was, like, 2 a.m. So <laughs> I conked out. Mm-hmm. But, um... My feet hurt after, of course, but it was fun, so I'm glad I did it. I'm happy you're glad you did it. Thank you. Yeah. Speaking of karate. Yes. I'm just going to assume you asked me how my life was. Well, I was about to say, hey, Robin, what's your, how's your <laughs> life? And then you're like, speaking of. Speaking of karate. Uh-huh. I have been thinking of what I want to do after... Um, I am fully vaccinated, which now I'm fully vaccinated. It's been a full two weeks after my second shot. Mm -hmm. And I want to join a women's self-defense course. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, Nice. I did one session of it Mm -hmm. when I was in... College. College, yes. Do you you remember? I wasn't there, but I remember a bunch of you guys doing it. It's just I had a class during the time that... They, like, they only met on Fridays or something like that, and I had a class during that time. So it wasn't a, a course in the semester. I know a couple of our friends did do this. This was actually just a single session. Right. For an unfortunate reason, it was, I believe, a, a female student was attacked in front of my dorm. And so for the my dorm and the one next to it, they made a session uh, that was specifically about women's self-defense. Mm. And my dad, you know, had, like, taught me self-defense moves as I was growing up so they would kind of be um, second nature if I was in a situation like I wouldn't have to think about it right but by going to this class I learned that he taught me not knowing that there were two different kinds he taught me the men's version of them which the men's version of it you are pushing out from your chest because that is your broadest part that is your center of gravity but for women it's the hips so it was a lot of the same movements he taught me Mm -hmm. but there they were prefaced by you're taking a step for uh, the ones I learned the women's self-defense course, you're taking a step forward and almost as if you're lowering, lowering your body before you shoot up with it. Right. Because you're maximizing the force from your hips. Mm-hmm. And I really had no idea that 
how to utilize my body in that way to get the most power out of it. And it turns out, like, you know, you can really do it. I actually got a t-shirt because I knocked the instructor back. (laughs) Uh, So anyway, I was just thinking it would be really nice to feel like I could defend myself while walking around. Right. And I I like the idea of the camaraderie (laughs) of a course like that. And I think you talking about karate made me interested in it, but specifically about, like, the the defense movements that I learned in that one course. Right. Yeah. Um, we actually do self-defense in my karate class as well. Oh, cool. So I, um, I have mastered the first two sets of self-defense. And so now that I'm a yellow belt, I'm going to learn the third set where you get to start throwing people. Ooh. Like on, in the second set, you get to like bring them to the ground, but Mm -hmm. you get to like throw them in the third set. And I can't wait. I have been thrown to the ground. So, it's fun. We should do, like, um, a social media special where you just demonstrate, we teach people, but you demonstrate on me and I'm just tossed around your apartment. (laughs) That sounds like you might get hurt, but let's do it. We just looked at all the furniture. (laughs) (laughs) She has columns in her apartment. Yes. You're just going to toss me into the columns. The columns are going to break. So, so we'll, we'll put a nut up. So, like, in between the two columns, and I'll just throw you, and you'll get caught into the net like a spider web. I like that. Yeah. I'm not and joking. I'm, I think we should do this. I'm just going to keep you there. I mean, I don't think I'm going to, like, stick to the net. No, you will. Are you going to put super glue on the net? Sure. This is Zoe's elaborate plan to kidnap <laughs> me, everybody. You heard this here first. Actually, no, she's in charge of editing. She can take anything out she wants. <sighs> and I've already kidnapped you. You spent the night at my house last night. I did. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, so is that your life update? That I want to start self-defense? Yeah. Okay. All right. So do you want to cover our something southern? Yes. So, Zoe. Yes. Or something southern is we didn't want to do a lot of work. <laughs> so, so, so we found an article mm-hmm. uh, from LittleThings.com yes. by Jess Ketcher, and it is titled 14 Delightfully Funny Southern Sayings You'll Want to Use Even Up North. Yeah. And so we're going to go through this list of 14 delightful little sayings, and we're going to A, rank them, not rank them, but we're going to say... A, have we ever heard this before? And B, do we like it? Like, are, yeah. we're going to either roast at them or be like, yeah, I'll use that. Okay, cool. So. Um, do you want to alternate who reads what? Yeah. Do you want to do the odd ones and I'll do the even ones? Because I hate odd numbers. Sound? I didn't know that about you. Sounds There's good. a reason I'm the even number episodes. Really? Yes. I okay. hate odd numbers. I just, okay, cool. <laughs> I, just cause I thought it was just because I thought of the first episode topic. <laughs> oh. Well, okay. That's the reason I didn't fight you to become the first. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, number one is, my eyeballs are floating. And apparently it's when you really have to pee. I've never heard that. I've never heard that. And it doesn't even make sense. Oh, Unless because there's so, so much float. water in you that your eyeballs are floating. That's stupid. <laughs> I mean, okay, the logic behind it is stupid. Yes. But, to be honest, I might use this in the future. <sighs> See, uh, I know my eyeballs are floating are supposed to be, like, two eyeballs just floating down a river or something. But when I hear it, I am, like, picturing somebody having, like, a seizure or their eyes rolling in the back of their head. I don't know why. Because I have poor reading comprehension. That's probably why. You do not have poor reading comprehension. You are an English major. C's get degree. No, I had A's in all my English classes. Um. Humble brag. (laughs) (laughs) No, if you want to talk about my engineering classes, we aren't going to because my mom listens to this. Dun, 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 dun. (laughs) Okay. Hey, Becky. (laughs) Okay, so my eyeballs are floating. That was number one. I hate the next one. I see it. I don't I don't like it. I really yeah. hate it. Booger is your least favorite word. I hate this. So this is slicker than snot on a doorknob. And its meaning is a particularly slippery patch or someone who is shady or slick. 
I gagged. I gagged. So a, I gagged. I've never heard it. I've never heard it either. No. And I, 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 I want to propose a slight change to it. I would say slicker than jelly on a doorknob. I feel like jelly would be sticky. I listen to my brother, my brother, and me. So that to all of our listeners is an inside joke. Ha ha. Robin, you won't get it. Just like I don't get your Game of Thrones references. Okay, fine. <laughs> but yes, I I don't, I've never heard anyone say that, and I don't think I would ever use it. If I heard someone say that, I would leave the conversation immediately. Yeah. The sirens are going. Yeah. Madder than a wet hen. Um, and it means somebody is super angry. I feel like I've heard that I one before. I think I've heard that too. But I don't think I heard it, like, in a real life scenario. I think it was, like, on a TV show or a movie or something like that. I can't remember where I heard it. It's possible it was TV. It's possible it was real life. Mm-hmm. Um, but it does sound familiar. Okay. So, okay, cool. But yeah. I would not use it. I think I wouldn't use it unless I was being a bit hokey. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. As useful as a trap door in a canoe. <laughs> Meaning not very useful in the least. I like that one. I love it. I've never heard of it. I've never heard it, but I think I'd use it. I would use it. Uh, yeah, totally. Like That's amazing. Yeah, as useful as a trapdoor in a canoe. Like, <laughs> that's like telling someone that they're not exactly the sharpest tool in the shed. And like, I wonder if that's going to be on the list or if that's just an everywhere phrase. Yeah, I think that's an everywhere phrase. Quick mini something southern when you're referring to shoes that you would wear for a sporting activity as in uh running or something what do you call them tennis shoes okay what do you call them i call them sneakers which is the southern way of doing i have no idea okay anyway so next phrase all hat and no cattle and this means to be overly boastful about yourself without much to back it up i've never heard it never heard it no I love it. I like it. It's like all of those. Okay, fun fact. And this is not about the South. But the cowboy way of life Uh only lasted for about 20 years. There were only 20 years where you could find legit cowboys doing whatever cowboys do. And And yet it's such an impactful impact on our society. (laughs) An impactful impact. She got A's in English, everybody. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> well, I mean, I think people really ran with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, of course, co-opted. Um, but it's like the the kind of the story of Japanese samurais they kind of took and then used on Westerns. I didn't know that. I think that's the case. Okay. Yeah. All I know is Walker, Texas Ranger. Yeah. And Chuck Norris jokes. I love the next one. You have to read it. Oh, my God. <laughs> I love it. 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 Number six, that dills my pickle, meaning I super happy it. and content. I hate it. I will never use it. I love it. I hate it. Oh, it, my God. It Would dills, you use it? Yeah. I mean, okay, in certain contexts with certain people. That, that dills my pickle. <laughs> ah, it does. Mm. Mm, that sounds uh, vulgar. Yeah. That, that sounds vulgar. I wouldn't use it. I like that it exists. How about that? Okay. 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 That's where I'm at. I hate this. I love it. <laughs> Windy as a sack full of farts. I hate it. Why? The meaning. The meaning. The meaning. Someone who lies a lot. Similar to calling someone a windbag. I've never heard it. Never heard it. So far, I don't think we've heard any of these. No, 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 I love it, would never use it. I don't like it, and I would never use it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, only got one oar in the water. Someone who isn't very smart and is always missing the point. I've never heard it. I think I might have. Really? It sounds familiar. Because, like, my idea of this phrase is, like, he only has one oar, so he's just going in a circle. You know? I have a funny canoeing story. But I don't need to go into it. <laughs> like and subscribe if you want to hear Robin's yeah. <laughs> funny and canoeing story. Um, and review. Review. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I've never heard it. I, I like it, but I don't think I'd use it. Okay. I, I don't see myself using it necessarily. 
Nine. Well, butter my butt and call me a biscuit. Yep. Meaning? I've heard of it. Oh, meaning. Uh, expression used when really shocked by something. Yeah. I I've mean, I feel like everybody's heard of this one. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't use it. I'm I, ambivalent towards it. Um, I don't know if... I, I, I like it. I think it's just... It's hard to... Maybe it's because I've heard it so often that right. I don't really have an opinion about it. I yeah. can't drum one up. No. Yeah. That's why I'm ambivalent as well. Because it's like, okay, we've heard of it. Yeah. Yeah. We all know what that means. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Off like a herd of turtles. My mom would like that one. It means running late and moving slowly. <laughs> so oh. me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That, she just likes turtles. That's the only reason why I brought her up. Um, I've never heard of it. It makes me sense either. to me, but I don't think I'd use it. Yeah, I don't think I would either. Is it technically called a herd of turtles? I have no idea what it's called. Or is it like a flock of turtles? I don't know. Or a colony of turtles? I don't think it's a flock. A I turtle of turtles? Flying. A turtle of turtles? Yes. There are some really good group names for animals. A bale of turtles? A bale of turtles. A dole of turtles and a nest of turtles are all three terms that you can use. A bale... A dole in a nest. I like a bale. I like a dole. Okay. A dole of turtle. I mean, not turtle, not a turtle. Turtle, turtle club. Turtle. Do we Our like show is educational. <laughs> <laughs> Eleven. More nervous than a cat in a room full of rocking chairs. I've heard that. Sorry, meaning. It means you're nervous. <laughs> it's really nervous. Yeah, I've heard it. I've heard it in real life. Um, it makes me sad because, like, the whole reason is because you rock back on the rocking chair and you hurt the cat's tail. Mm -hmm. And so they, they're nervous. That's why they're nervous. And it makes me sad. Well, I'm not really sad by it because I don't think it was inspired by a true story. (laughs) I feel like it would be inspired by a true story. But not a room full of rocking chairs. True. Where it's, like, surrounded. It's, like, imagine the cat's <laughs> nightmare. Just, like, a room full of rocking <laughs> Uh I honestly like this one. Okay. I I, I think it's... I, I've heard it. It's just... It makes me sad. I would potentially use it, but not around you, because I don't want to offend your delicate sensibilities. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I think she just called me a snowflake. Um. <laughs> uh, okay, so number 12. Never kick a cow turd on a hot Uh, day. What's up with the gross ones? And the meaning is don't go asking for trouble. I like how mean the cat, the cow looks in that photo. It does look so mean. (laughs) But like never kick a cow turd. You shouldn't be, no, you shouldn't be kicking a cow turd anyways. Never mind if it's a hot day. It kind of makes sense because it's like, okay, if it's a hot day and you kick a cow turd, you know your shoe is going to get messy. So it's like, why do something when you know there's going to be a bad consequence for it? But your shoe's going to get messy if it's a cold day, too. Not really, because it... It, it would have to be really cold for it to freeze over and you not get messy. I'm not saying it will be, but it'd be hard. Okay, I'm not going to go into it too much. Oh, okay. But I get what they mean. Oh, okay. Okay. So it could be harder. Anyway. <laughs> uh, 13. Don't know whether to scratch... <sighs> To scratch (laughs) their watch or wind their butt. I don't like it. It means you're confused. I've never heard it, I don't think. (laughs) Zoe is delighted. I hate that there are so many gross ones. That's hilarious. Why? I don't know. I've never heard it. I love it. I would never use it. I would never use it. (laughs) Okay. Zoe, our final one. Tougher than a $2 steak, meaning someone or something that is very difficult. I have heard that. You Really? I've yeah. never heard it. But I like it. I like it, too. By the way, that picture of the steak does look very tough, in my opinion. I'll believe you. It looks like a piece of plastic, honestly. It's not dark brown. It's really light brown for a steak. Um, yeah, so just you have, a, like, a really bad cut of meat. There's not a lot of fat or marbling. Yeah. It's just and it's tough, tough to chew. And honestly, if anybody's selling steak for two dollars, oh, don't get the steak. Don't get the steak. It's like don't get gas station sushi. As I was, what was it? No, it wasn't gas station sushi. It was mall sushi that I almost got last yeah, night. Yeah, it was mall sushi. <laughs> she was like, I think I'm gonna get that. And then I was like, I just 
made fun of her really hard in the line until she felt bad about the decision. <laughs> she just had to do it. You, you, which now I feel bad about you, saying you it out loud. <laughs> you didn't make fun of me. I was like, you're really going <laughs> to eat mall sushi. <laughs> which, it's a good thing you said that because that was not going through my brain. <laughs> my brain was saying, that's weird. Teriyaki chicken sushi. I've that never seen weird. chicken and sushi. I want to try it. You know, maybe it means that, like, there wasn't any fish and I'm sure they cooked the chicken. So it was probably safe and it was just in a, a, a rice roll, you know? Yeah. No, definitely. They wouldn't have served raw chicken. I'm not saying they would have served raw chicken. I'm saying that maybe it's not put in with raw fish, Would be, which would be my worry if I were eating raw, raw fish from the mall. Gotcha. Okay. Yes. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Did you get me? I did get you, okay? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we would like to go into our story, but first... Shout out to Ohio. I know, right? <laughs> Thank you to the state of Ohio. So Ohio... You listen to us a lot. Yes. Which is funny, because we don't cover you. <laughs> yeah, we don't cover Ohio. Uh, we actually have a friend who's currently probably on a plane or just got off a plane. She's leave. I can't do that for uh, copyright reasons, for but, legal reasons. But you know what she was going for there. Yeah. <laughs> and, unless you don't. <laughs> But yeah, hi Ohio. How's it, how's the weather up there? Please take care of our dear friend who is going to chase her dreams and we're so proud of you. Yay! Yay! I think we can say her name. Yeah, we can say Brittany. Brittany! <laughs> <laughs> we're so proud of you. But yes. Live your best life. And thank you Ohio and please take care of her. Yes. And so we Robin and I were talking to Blue with Duda. So, um mm-hmm. <laughs> Robin and I were actually talking so we're I, actually talking. We don't usually talk, but no, in this case, no. we're actually talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we, uh, at the end of every episode, we ask everybody to share their own spooky stories. So this could be ghost-related, mystery, uh, true crime, anything that happened to you or in your town, and you want to tell your perspective on it. And we were always like, oh, share your southern spooky story. And... We were looking at our listener base and their locations, and we realized Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> and also around. It's not just Ohio. Yeah, it's but. not just Ohio, but like we have more listeners in Ohio than we have in South Carolina, and we're based yeah. in South Carolina. And most yeah. of our family and friends are in South Carolina. Yeah. So that's saying something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so we decided that we're going to open up our spooky submissions to everyone. Global. Yeah. yeah. Wherever you live, in the world. In the world. Mm-hmm. Or off the world. Yeah, I mean, like, okay, if somebody's like, hey, I'm an alien from Mars, here's my spooky story, I'd be like, totally. Or like the Haunted International Space Station. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So what we really want to do is start up uh, listener episodes that I guess we do as we get them, you know? Right, And we know we have one coming our way, so we just need two more to do a first episode, and it'd be really fun, guys. Yes, it would be very, very fun. So, please, if you have your own spooky story, no longer has to be Southern, please send it to hauntedhospitalitypodcast at gmail.com, and we would love to share it, and we'll give you a shout-out and everything. And everything. And everything. So... Yeah, I just wanted to bring that up before we go into the story. But Robin, Mm -hmm. would you like to share your story? I would, because you already know what I'm doing. I'm not going to ask you if you've heard of it. Right. I'm going to ask you, how much do you know about the Bleeding House in Atlanta? Okay. So, yes, I did put it on the episode idea page. Um, That's because I was looking up mysteries, and it had, like, one mystery in every single state and so i just copied and pasted the mysteries clever i just assumed you innately knew like a dozen ideas no no i'm not that i'm not that worldly um so it had one like one paragraph i believe it's like an old couple and their house started bleeding and they called the cops and the cops were like that's blood and then the old people were like what do we do about it? And the cops were like, I don't know. So they just cleaned it up and moved on with their lives. Not gonna lie. That is the broad strokes. Woohoo! <laughs> but there are a lot of really interesting details. And Zoe, normally 
I go into an episode knowing what actually happened. Right. Okay, so, or at least I know what it seems the consensus is. So the Devil's Tramping Ground seems consensus is, seems to be haunted by something. Right. Something's going on there, supernatural, and that's enough for me to feel like I know the broad strokes. Mary the Wanderer, ghost. Lavinia Fisher, we thought it was one thing, and then research said that she would had a totally different crime and it looks like she's still haunting and still angry and still a badass and everything <laughs> else. Definitely a badass. So we, I have no idea what happens <laughs> in this episode. No, seriously, I have no idea what happened. I know the details behind it. Right. And so we're going full unsolved Ooh. and we're going to try to come to a consensus between us about what, based on all these facts that I've gathered, uh-huh. about what we think happened. Okay. And listeners, if you think that we are right, if we're wrong, if you have any sort of opinion on this, please reach out to us because this is an all-hands-on-deck situation. Yeah. Because I don't know what happened. Okay. I think there are three things that this could be, but Mm -hmm. I don't know the details of any of them. I just know the genre of what it could be. Okay. But what I need to do right now Uh is give you all the details of the case. Okay. So... In 1987, Willie and Minnie Winston. Their names are Willie and Minnie. And to be honest, I might be calling her Millie on accident because I wrote her name as Millie a lot on accident in my (laughs) notes. Uh, But Willie and Minnie Winston uh, had been living in a house on Fountain Drive, which is in a black neighborhood in southwest Atlanta Mm -hmm. for about 22 years. They are in their late 70s. He is 79. She is 77. Uh, Willie has to undergo dialysis very frequently, I think possibly on a daily basis. And that dialysis is when, like, they replace your blood with fresh blood because your kidneys don't work or something like that? Um, It is where they clean your blood because your kidneys don't work. I do not know the medical details of it, but I do know you're hooked up to a machine and you're I think your blood cycles through. Oh, content warning, a whole bunch of blood. Yeah. (laughs) Just, if if that is bad for you in any sort of way, don't listen to this because there's just a lot of it and there's literally no avoiding it. Yeah. (laughs) If you didn't get that from the title of this episode. (laughs) Um, But basically your blood is going through these tubes outside of your body, I think into this machine that cleans it Mm -hmm. and then puts it back in. And you... I have to assume that taking all your life fluid out of you and putting it into a machine, even though I'm sure it doesn't do it all at once because you'd be dead. Right. I'm sure that cannot feel good. No. And it can't make your body feel okay long term, especially when you're in your late 70s. Yeah. Yeah. But it's basically just like an external kidney. Mm -hmm. Is a kidney what cleans your blood? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Okay. It is. Your kidney is what removes toxins. If people are telling you that your body has too many toxins and you need to take a special smoothie or special pill to get rid of it, don't listen to them. Your kidneys do it unless you have serious kidney problems. Yes. Like Willie Winston. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I think he would frequently do dialysis at home. Okay. I think they had the machine set up. And Minnie was his primary caretaker. I mean, it's his wife. But, you know, she's the one doing a, probably a lot of his medical stuff, taking Hooking care of him a lot, because he is often bedridden. Right. Yeah, or just about. And so they, this comes up later, they live on a fixed income, mm-hmm. and so they're well enough to keep living the way they are, but they're not super well off. That's important for later. Okay. Okay. Tuesday, September 9th, 1987. The doors are locked and the alarm is set. Okay. Nobody has visited today. Okay. It is late at night. Mm Mm-hmm. Willie is in bed, I think probably sleeping. Minnie is taking a bath. Okay. She gets up from her bath, steps onto the floor, and into what is described as a pool of blood. Ugh. Yep. She is unsure what it is and obviously... It looks like blood. And her one of her first thoughts is, is this Willie's blood? Oh. Because it's her older husband, you know, who she takes care of. And so, she, but again, she's not sure what's happening. So she goes to check on him. And uh, the quote I saw, which came from, I believe, 
the AP, said she wanted him to, quote, come look at all this red stuff coming out of the floors. Okay. So maybe it wasn't exactly where stirring his blood or what she wasn't sure. Anyway, she's on her way to check on him when she's in the hall and blood starts squirting up from the floor. Oh. I'm serious. One thing I saw described it as a geyser. Another described it as like a sprinkler. I came up with the word squirting because it seemed to be a good mesh of the two things. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. So she goes, gets Willie. Willie gets up. Uh, and they're both freaked out, obviously. Yeah. I don't know why this is Minnie's first go to because it wouldn't be mine. She goes to mop up the blood in the bathroom while he goes and checks around the house. Because I think at this point, uh-huh. maybe she's a little bit worried it was blood beforehand, but now they think, oh, this isn't blood. It's just, why would, because like, why would blood be showing up in your house? Right. You'd probably think it's like dirty sewer water or something gross. Yeah. Yeah. So he is going to see what's beyond the bathroom and the hall while she's mopping it up. And he f- finds blood all over the walls and the floor in, like, four or five out of the six rooms in their house. There is blood in the kitchen, in the living room, in the bedroom, oh in all these places. And later they find it in the basement as well. So that's, like, a lot of blood. It's a lot of blood. and so Like, more th- blood than you'd find, like, in the human body. I don't think it's necessarily more blood than you would find. Because you can find eight pints of blood in a human body. Right. So when I say blood, I'm. it's not like the Wolfric Axe murders. When, like, when we say a pool of blood on the floor, we mean, like, a pool of blood that is a person's... All of a person's blood emptied out onto a floor. Mm-hmm. It's different because I kept seeing the word silver dollar sized. So, oh. and so the pools of blood were, like... Basically, think a bigger than a quarter, but not too much bigger than a quarter. Okay. And then there were streaks on walls that were maybe like half a foot long. Things okay. like that. So it wasn't like just, I mean, it was so much blood because it was all over the house. Right. But it. It wasn't like it was like water falling out of the ceiling. It and, wasn't water falling out of the ceiling. It wasn't that scene in, oh, what's that movie where the elevator is open and just The blood. Shining. Yeah. No, this was not The Shining. <laughs> this, But it was enough, like, she stepped in it and it squirted from the floor. And all these, so it's a lot of blood. Yeah. But it's not like several people were required to have died in order to make all of that blood. Okay. They call the police and... It seems like at this point, Minnie is calling it blood. So she's the one who calls him. At this point, it has crossed the tick of midnight. So now they are in Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Isn't it so weird that the first hour of the day starts at 12 a.m.? And not 1. Yeah. Well, I guess 12 is kind of like zero. Okay, anyways. Because in military time, it is zero. Gotcha. Sorry, that I just had that thought in my head. I was like, wait, why is that why is that it? Anyway, so okay, it ticks over and so it is now Wednesday, September tenth. And mm-hmm. just there's like a really tight timeline of three days, so I just wanted to bring that in. She calls the police and she says there is a lot of blood. And the reason I know she says there's a lot of blood is because there is a an account of somebody who overheard the policeman who got the call okay. about it. And he was like Okay, so there's a lot of blood, but no body. Yeah. So either he asked if there was a body or she specified there was no body. Mm-hmm. And it was a foggy night. That only helps with the atmosphere of it. Of Just course. Know it was a foggy <laughs> night. All these sirens. Anyway, and uh, the thing I read said... Nobody knew, like, how to handle just blood showing up in a house without any real source. So they sent a lot of different units. So you have EMTs and police showing up. Mm -hmm. And even the property manager, because remember they rented the house, and the property manager's son showed up. Okay. And so all these people come in to this quiet older couple's house. I remember the property manager and the son are the people who found the blood underneath the TV. So the TV was on, like, a table, and they found that... In the basement. Okay. So that was under there. And then one of the police who arrived was Detective Steve Cartwright, who I believe I didn't actually end up reading his uh, memoir because I couldn't find how to get it for free from the library. (laughs) Um, But he later wrote a memoir in which this is one of the cases he talks about. Okay. 
look up the cover. It's a gem. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, they don't think it's blood yet. He doesn't think it's blood. Okay. He shows up, and he can see the blood. So she didn't mop it up everywhere. She just mopped it up in the bathroom. Okay. He asks Minnie, is her eyesight good? Oh. Which, to me, is a weird question, because you show up to a house where you can see the blood, and you are asking the older woman who lives there if she saw the blood right. I feel like at that point, you should be able to look at it. And, and be like, hey, that's blood, or that's not blood. Yeah, or even if you look at it and you're like, you can't quite tell, I don't get why he had to ask her that. Yeah, it seems almost like patronizing. It is. That's the thing that comes up a lot. It's oh. very patronizing. Okay. Yeah, so anyway, the blood is there. Steve Cartwright is not so much thinking that it is blood right now he is thinking it's like the word rust came up a lot a lot of people thought this was was like rusty water or something that somehow got around everywhere Mm -hmm. okay because like one of the things is it is you know on the floors and on the walls and it is often above the heating vents so like you have those little grates in the floors Mm -hmm. so maybe it came up from the basement there's a bit of a complication with that theory but i'll there's a complication with every freaking theory (laughs) but i'll bring that up later but they send off samples to the lab Mm -hmm. and later the day assume the sun is out because maybe they got some sleep i don't know anyway it's just important to me that they sleep because they're an older couple okay (laughs) uh they got the uh test done and it is blood it is human blood is it ab positive no, no. Why do you say that? I don't know. What's the blood type? Do you just, o positive. O positive. Ooh. Why do you, that's the most common type. O positive? Yeah. Really? Yeah, I looked it up. Was it the type of either of those, the... Nope. Oh, because my theory this whole time was like the dialysis machine, like something with that, you know, but if it's not his blood type... It would make sense that it was the dialysis machine, because isn't it so weird that this happens in the... The home of a couple where, like... They have a dialysis machine. Yes, but no. So, Willie and Minnie are both A-positive. Me too. Oh, nice. I don't know what mine is. Oh. I'll find it out. Actually, I might be A-negative. Okay. I'm an A. Cool. Nice. Anyway. She she, she did a little face thing with the hand (laughs) under the chin. Anyway. (laughs) um, Well, the blood is O. Uh Uh-huh. And it's human blood. And this... The Rose police threw a loop. Yeah, because they were like, hey, the blind lady thinks it's blood, but it's actually She's rusty. not blind. Yeah, but he okay. he was making yeah. fun of her. Oh, okay, okay. You keep Gosh, going. Robin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and they hold a press conference about it. A press conference? What were they going to say? Yo, check out this weird crap that's happening. <laughs> I actually, you know, now that I think about it, I'm not sure why they had a press conference. Maybe the news had already gotten out a bit. Oh, Because maybe, right. like, police scanners or something, and everybody's like, wait, the bleeding house? Um, so, okay, talking at the press conference was Lieutenant Horace Walker. Okay. <laughs> yes. And he said they didn't have any leads. Um, and they also said that while they are still investigating... They're not seeing any evidence that it was a crime. Mm-hmm. I'm a little suspicious about that. Okay. Because there was blood everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so you would think that there might be a crime. Yeah. And there was nothing to make them think it was the result of a homicide. A homicide? Homicide. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> There's nothing to make it seem like it was a homicide. Okay. Which, again, I'm a little suspicious about why you're, like, off the bat saying it the next day. Right. When there was blood everywhere that is human and O negative. It seems like they just went into it with the idea of this isn't actually a thing that's happening. And then even when evidence came up to the contrary, they were like, mm, it's still not happening. Like, did they not check the hot water tank for a human corpse or... You know, I'm not Maybe, finding. Is it, was it on well? Maybe there's a human corpse in the well? They did have a hot water heater. Yes. I don't know. I don't see them checking. I didn't think they'd... I, didn't, I don't... You threw me! <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they checked it. Or at least I'm not seeing that they checked it. Okay. What they did do, though... Am I at that part yet? No, I'm not at that part yet. Okay. I'll get to that part in a second. <laughs> okay, a woman who worked uh, in PR for the police department, her name is Marion Lee, said that they didn't think it was a hoax. Okay. 
she's the only one going around saying they don't think it was a hoax because all the police seem to kind of think it could be a hoax. Yeah, these darn old people these days always yeah, hoaxing the police with hoaxing real the police. blood. Yeah. The- Clearly, they just want it out of their lease. Clearly. Out of their 22-year lease. lease. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, in fact, one of the policemen said, according to the AP News article, mm-hmm. quote, it's not going to be a, you know, the house that bleeds. Because they were saying they were going to find the logical explanation for all of this. Right. Guess what this is known as? The Bleeding Hills. Yes, <laughs> it is. They're, they didn't find any logical explanation. But what they did do, okay, I'm back at it. What they did do, okay. they went around to local blood banks and they checked to see if any blood was missing because their thought was oh. this was gotten from somewhere. Like, maybe, like, some teenage kids, like, broke into the house somehow and put it in the wall. No. That's... Maybe that was one of their initial thoughts. That's not... That didn't actually end up being what they unofficially thought. Okay. They never put out what they officially thought, but we do know because somebody interviewed one of them. Okay. Later. And I'm going to get to that. (laughs) (laughs) But police checked the local blood banks and didn't find any reports of missing blood. And the article I read specified that this actually happened during the AIDS crisis. So people were really protective of blood that they knew didn't have AIDS because Mm -hmm. people were scared, you know? Mm -hmm. So, like, blood wouldn't have gone missing. Right. That wouldn't have been documented, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Um, And then after this conference, I think that's when press and everything really started to blow up. Mm. This was so heavily publicized. So like I'm saying, I'm getting sources from the AP News. There was a thing in the New York Times. Uh, It just was everywhere. And people started calling uh, radio shows. They Mm -hmm. were calling the police. And they were calling, unfortunately, the Winstons constantly. In fact, on Wednesday night, the phone rang the whole time. And many didn't get any sleep. Either oh. from the phone ringing the whole time or from being the person who was having to answer the phone right. and talking to people. <sighs> now we're on to Thursday, September okay. 11th, 1987. Okay. Yes. So many people crowded that house and that street that a friend of the family was concerned that if Willing did need to go to the hospital for any type of medical attention, mm-hmm. which happened sometimes, yeah, that they wouldn't be able to get him out of there it was that crowded yeah people were ringing the phone and they were like knocking on the door so hard the house literally was shaking jesus they were there yeah and minnie and willie hated this like uh, yeah i can imagine yeah they whenever they would talk to press the press would like note also they hate that this is happening (laughs) um and they screamed that there wasn't blood in the house. Like, from the inside of the house, they screamed, there's not blood in the house, and to, for everyone to go away. Did they clean up the blood? I'm or? sure at this point the blood is cleaned up. I don't know okay. if it was them, or sometimes, you know, you have but people it didn't. who come in after crime scenes mm-hmm. and clean things up. But it didn't just, like, magically disappear? No. Okay. This is real blood. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make sure. That's one thing that comes up later. I read a book that had, like, this guy did a lot of research on this case and this was only like a chapter in it but he mentioned that there are a lot of haunted house cases where blood shows up Mm -hmm. but in that case it's not things you could necessarily test in which case this is very testable Mm -hmm. which makes it a lot more concrete than you typically see if it's a paranormal thing right right right. not to say it's not a paranormal thing at all but It's just weird because there's, it both falls in every category and there's things to deny every category as well. Right. Yeah. Okay. So now we are out of the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday timeline. I just wanted to let you know what happened. After this, Minnie and Willie started to deny that there had ever been blood in the house. They didn't say nothing ever happened when Mm -hmm. people called, but they came up with different stories for it. So for example, Willie said that... At one point, he said that they had had a red rug and the color had run. Oh. And later, he changed the story to they had leaky, rusty pipes. Okay. Millie said 
later that it was rusty water from the water heater, that something bad had happened with it and it had sprayed up in the house. Um, but when she was asked if anything had been in the heating vents that we had mentioned, because it had been, the blood did often show up above those heating vents, not exclusively, right. but often. And so she was asked after she said that the hot water heater had sprayed it up, mm -hmm. if those heating vents um, had had the, quote, rusty water mm -hmm. in them. And she said no. And that would have been the only way it could have gotten up from the basement because the hot water heater is in the basement. Gotcha. Okay. Yes. Um, it seems very clear to me that they did not want the attention. So, like, mm -hmm. there's a couple of reasons they could possibly be denying that there was ever blood, and which I'm actually going to get to in a second. We're so <laughs> close <laughs> to getting, to, but I'm wanting to wait into, to get into the theories until after I have all the facts all the, on the table. All the facts on the table. Okay. So uh, the police stopped giving this case so much attention. Um, one of the reasons they gave is because just a few days before this case, there had been a police shooting of a 19-year-old black man named mm. Lamar Montgomery uh, within a mile of mm -hmm. this house. So this was uh, a neighborhood, like I said, a majority black neighborhood it seems like it was often maybe neglected by the local government, so things that maybe the local government should have right. paid for. Uh, for example, I don't know if this was an example of what this guy saw when he was there or just an example of how this often happens, but like a fire hydrant that's not connected, things like that, that okay. the local government should be taken care of, they weren't. Right, okay. Yeah. And so the police were saying that because of the shooting of Lamar Montgomery by a police officer that they needed to investigate, because the whole thing with that had been the police officer was trying to go after a suspect and then saw Lamar Montgomery dri driving down the road. And he matched the description, I say he sarcastically. He, the police officer, I guess, seemed to think so because, you know, he, he yeah, shot he's... him. His claim was that he thought he was a sus suspect and he thought he was driving the car to hit him. But they also found that... Uh, in the investigation that one of the bullets had gone through the back windshield, which meant that the he car had passed away. when he was still shooting. Yeah. Yeah. Just so you know, the police officer, uh, I th think the jury refused. There was, like, about to be criminal something against him, but I think the jury acquitted him or didn't indict him or something along those lines. I can't exactly remember the details. But the police people were saying that they needed to divert their resources to that investigation to yes. see what the officer did. But they were saying because of that, they couldn't actually investigate this case. Because we they have so few police officers and this they're is, so underfunded. This is Atlanta PD. There's, I guarantee you, so many Atlanta police officers. I mean, I think that that could have been their logic. I'm saying it's bad logic. Right. And I also think that they never gave this case any sort of valid attention because they didn't think it was legitimate. Right. And by this case, I'm talking about the Bleeding House. Within six months, the case was closed and it's still listed as unsolved, which I didn't know you could close a case while still listing it as unsolved. A person who uh, was a spokesperson for the police, maybe it was the same Marion person, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Anyway, she did say like about six months out that the police really didn't have any idea what happened with this case at all. Okay. Now they did have their theories. Mm-hmm. Okay, so. We're in the part of this where we're going to try to figure out what happened. Okay. First theory is a hoax. Okay. And this is what the police were really leaning on. Right, yeah. Okay, so. Rebecca Long, the Georgia skeptic, I believe is the newspaper she worked for, or publication she worked for, uh, which is basically just a publication uh, dedicated to disproving the paranormal, which oh. I find so paradoxical because I feel like if you don't believe in it, why are you spending so much time disproving it? Yeah. It's, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> she is a reporter for the uh, Georgia Skeptic, or at least a writer for them, and she, along with a few of her colleagues, interviewed Lieutenant Walker, who was the guy who said they had no leads at the September 10th press conference. Right. Lieutenant Walker 
said that the police didn't want to delve further into this case because it seemed that there were actually family issues going on within the Winston family. That would mean either the Winstons or their children were doing this to hoax the other party. What? (laughs) The theory is maybe the Winstons, who had three adult children who lived outside of the house, wanted attention from their kids and so put blood all around their house to get their attention. And the idea was maybe they would have had access to blood because of... Willie's frequent dialysis. Yeah, that kind of thing. Uh. Um, (laughs) Which just seems very out of character from everything I'm seeing about this older couple who hate this so much. If you're trying to trick your kids into believing your house is bleeding, you wouldn't call the police. Mm -hmm. You'd put the blood everywhere, and then you'd call your kids and be like, oh my god, get over here, there's blood everywhere. Exactly. Unless your kids weren't answering their phones to you anymore. Um, But there's not really... I mean, maybe the police found things that made it seem like this. I'm not finding anything that makes... I'm not finding any information at all that makes it seem like there was anything wrong going on with the family. I mean, you never really know, but... Right. um, The other idea is that the adult children, uh, one of whom was a daughter who worked in the local hospital, did this in order to make their parents seem mentally unfit to care for themselves. And so they would get, like, maybe something like power of attorney and be able to have access to their financial assets. How would making the house bleed in a way that other people can also (laughs) see make them seem like they're mentally unwell? I don't know. Unless they were trying to make it look like the parents did this and that they're quote unquote crazy i okay at this i'm not saying these things because i believe them i'm saying these things to like i hate phrase devil's advocate i'm trying to explain all the theories yes all the theories leave no stone unturned and i am here to say that i do not believe it was a hoax in the slightest at least not in the two scenarios that the police presented i don't think it's a hoax in these two scenarios either okay um but just to go along with it it would make sense that the winstons would quickly go back on their ever having been blood if they found out that one of their children put blood in the house because they would probably want to keep that quiet because right. it's embarrassing for them and their kids yeah but i do have to say that an old couple suddenly being bombarded with news and attention and people coming I would go back on it quickly, too, to get the people to leave me alone. I think that's ultimately why they did that. And I think that makes a lot of sense. Again, I don't know what the thought process was to get these police to think that this was the case, other than they were searching for a logical explanation and that they were already really patronizing to the family. And this just kind of seems like a patronizing, oh, it was a family squabble thing, rather than something really disturbing actually happened, and we don't know why it happened. Yeah, it just sounds like they don't care. And the other thing to go against this is, the alarm was on. Now, I can see one of the kids having a key to the house, but even if you use a key to the house to open the door, the alarm's going to go off. Nothing went off. Mm -hmm. Minnie said nobody had been in the house earlier that day. Right. I mean, the kids could have had the code to the alarm. They probably did. Okay, I mean, that's a good point. (laughs) But the other thing of it... Minnie was taking a bath. There was no blood on the floor before she took the bath. So she, unless she passed out in the bath, in which case she probably would have drowned, there's no way, like, somebody would have come and dropped blood on the floor without her noticing. Yeah, not just dropped it, but, like, rubbed it on the walls, did everything. Yeah. <sighs> okay. And she saw it squirt up between her feet, on, between the floorboards, as she walked down the hallway. Yes, she did. Yeah. So it's not like somebody was, like, with a water gun hiding underneath the floor going, pew, pew. What if that is exactly what happened? (laughs) Anyway. Okay. Um, What's the next theory? True crime. And this one is honestly, it's so weird because I kept expecting to think it was true crime. Yeah. And by true crime, I guess I mean... Like, somebody... Somebody was hurt or deliberately trying to intimidate the Winstons. Right. I don't think true crime just has to be murder, you know? Of course, no. It's any crime that really happened. Any crime that's true is true crime. (laughs) 
This is a theory because I think it should be a theory. (laughs) Okay. But there's absolutely no evidence to support it because it wasn't investigated, really. Okay. So I'm basically going to give you the reasons why it's not a true crime, even though I think that should have been considered more. I don't know. Okay, so basically the police always said from the get-go, it doesn't look like this was a homicide. It doesn't look like anybody was murdered. They checked local blood banks rather than checking if anybody had died recently. Right. And I guess in one hand it makes sense why they did that because, you know, it's a quiet older couple. It doesn't make sense that anybody could have gotten in because the doors were locked, the alarm was set, there was no blood when she got in the bath, and then there was suddenly blood everywhere and when she got out of it. Mm-hmm. It doesn't scream, what would it be? That somebody was brought into the house, murdered in the house, dragged around the house, mm-hmm. and then brought back out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> Which I guess would be the thing to make it true crime in the murdery sense. Yeah. But then again, nothing else makes sense either. No. So I'm, I'm putting true crime out there because I think it should be considered. But they never seemed concerned that anybody had died as a result of this, even when they couldn't find where the blood came from. Right. Did they ever, like, DNA test? Was that before DNA testing? I just took a... Yeah, sorry. Yeah. I was trying to go. I was going, Lizzie. Lizzie. Uh, <laughs> was that before DNA? I don't know. Let me Google. Okay, so really this started at about 1986. And so that's a little bit after this... Or before this? Um, this well, this is was 1987, but... 87, okay. So it wasn't going to be widespread enough for them to probably think of that instantly. Actually, okay, it started in... I'm get, I'm seeing things like 1983, but that is when it first began, and who knows like when it became trusted. Right, you and know? when it became widespread, and even if you did have the DNA, like of the blood that came in the house, you had nothing to compare it to. Mm -hmm. We didn't have databases and systems and things like that yet. Exactly. So, like, okay, now we know a DNA profile of this person, but we really don't have anything else to go on. Um, Now, there was one thing. um, There was Lab Tech who was interviewed, and she did say that while... Because there was a lot of police arguing going on um, okay. toward the end of when they were investigating the case and kind of when they decided to stop investigating it. And because of all that arguing um, and deciding not to move forward with it, they couldn't do further tests on the blood to find out anything about it beyond mm. the fact that it was O positive. And one thing I thought of, I don't know if they did this, but I think it would have probably been a really good idea to have gotten blood from s- different parts of the house and yeah. tested all of it because yeah. people, okay if it's more than like one type of blood then yeah you got that blood from somewhere i don't think you killed two people for this right but if it was just all one person's blood or one type of blood it's more likely that it was belonged to one person and that person's very hurt yeah because okay i think typically when they take your blood i think they do it one pint at a time yeah i just from all this, I think that's a lot of ground for one pint to cover. Right, yeah. Though you can double donate. Oh, really? You, But, like, basically, I think the way they do it, I think you can double donate, but you have a longer wait period between giving blood. Or they can do this thing where, like, they take your blood and put your platelets back or something like that. So it might be you take your platelets and put your blood back. I don't remember what it was. I think but take your platelets. Yeah, something like that. So there is, there are scenarios where you can double donate, but I can't help but wonder if even double donating would be enough. Yeah, I don't know. It's just not clear. Okay, so that's it for true crime, which... <laughs> Again, I was expecting to be the most to be the most viable option, uh-huh. but doesn't seem to be. There's or, a, hot, a body um, in the hot water heater. That's my guess. To be honest, that's a good guess. Um, mm-hmm. There's reasons it's discounted, but there's reasons everything <laughs> is discounted. So, I guess it's as likely as anything else. Okay, here is the final theory, and I have some uh, additional information for this one. Okay. Final theory is supernatural. Poltergeist. Okay, do you want to elaborate? No. Actually, it's funny you say that. There was a book, and I don't have it in my notes because I couldn't find the book. Okay. <laughs> um, I think it was Unexplained Mysteries of the 20th Century okay. by 
Janet and Colin board. Maybe I did remember. Wow. Wow. That, I just, I'm looking at Zoe the entire time. I did not look at my notes for she that. She did not. I will contest. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, they theorized that it was a poltergeist. Okay. We'll see a poltergeist. I don't know make... why they did it, because I only saw it in the George Skeptics one. Sorry. Oh. What about poltergeists? Poltergeists can make things appear and disappear and things like that, and they can teleport things and make all of that. But the thing with a poltergeist, I feel like if a poltergeist made blood appear in the walls, it would do the whole magical disappearance thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you wouldn't be able to keep it for testing. Yeah. Okay. So, history lesson. Ooh. Of the house. Boo. Okay. I'm kidding. <laughs> the guy who lived there before Willie and Minnie. So, 24 years prior. Thereabouts. Um, his name was Albert Thompson. He got into a car accident. I know. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) He got into a car accident, and it was the fault of a white driver whose name might have been Dub or something like that. That's a weird name. It's a weird name. Uh, Dub didn't get in trouble. Of course not. Yep. And Albert had to go to the hospital for his injuries, and he was treated there, but they didn't know that he was bleeding internally oh no yeah so he was sent to the house and i don't know if he ended up dying at the house but he did internally bleed to death to death most of the time at the house if not all the time at the house wow so okay so the article his spirit possessed the house and he was and continued internally bleeding just but like didn't do anything except for 22 years later and it was his birthday. Actually, um, it wasn't his birthday. It wasn't his birthday. It wasn't his birthday. Oh, man. But, <laughs> I got so excited. Um, it was starting to get close to the anniversary of the car accident. Okay. So the car accident happened. I don't know exactly when the car accident happened versus when he died. Okay. He died on Halloween. And the car accident happened somewhere, bef- somewhere between, you know, the September 9th blood and then Halloween. So it was like a month and a half of, I'm not sure exactly when it happened. So the article I read seemed to not exactly be trying to hint that it was his blood literally uh, haunting the house. Right. But it was just bringing, so the article I read, it was so good. Actually, I want to find the the name of it just so I can reference it here. Um, I mean, I looked at a lot of articles, but this was one was really, really good. It was called The Blood House at Fountain Drive by Danny Cherry Jr. It is at trulyadventure.us. Mm-hmm. And he was bring he's like where I found a lot of the information about the uh, police brutality in the area because he really brought up like the fact of black people suffering in this area and kind of use this blood in their house as a metaphor for it. So I think he was saying that this was, he was bringing up in a metaphorical way, Mm -hmm. but I saw it and I was like, ghost blood. (laughs) (laughs) So um, one other thing pointing to Supernatural is that a whole bunch of paranormalists were calling, like I said, the radio shows and were calling the police wanting to be able to get in touch with the family Mm -hmm. because they were concerned. Yeah, well, some people were trying to seize on the opportunity. So like psychics, there was literally a psychic who was like, I can fix it. Um, right. No, you can't. I, I'm kind of anti-psychic. Okay. Except for, like, the fun tarot card or fun you're doing my palm reading. But if you're, like, telling me you're contacting my dead family or if you're trying to right. use your, quote, powers to help me in any way, it stops being fun and starts being exploitative. That Especially is my opinion. if you're charging money. Yes. Well, okay, I'm like, I'm going to pay for the experience of having somebody read my palm. I'm willing to do that. Yes. But, like, if you're one of those mega people who has a show, if you have a show, get out of here. <laughs> if you have a show, get out of here. <laughs> okay, sorry. My uh, lone little rant is normal now that I have uh, gotten those pesky psychic listeners out of here <laughs> now that they've left. Okay. Don't hex us, please. Yeah, don't. I mean, if you could. So... <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm you you want them to hex us? No, I don't want them to hex us. I'm saying oh. you can't. Oh. Oh. I'm, if you had the ability to. I'm just to. being combative. Okay. Yes. I don't want to be combative. Sorry. Wow, Robin. Was it the donuts? It was the donuts. <laughs> okay, so um, an article I read also seemed to be hinting possibly that when they were yelling on September 11th for that there was no blood in the house and for everybody to get out, maybe they were trying to exercise a demon. 
I don't think that was the case. Okay. I think they were yelling at journalists. They were yelling at journalists. Yeah, that's where I am at that. Glad we're on the same thing. So now I have some uh, other examples of supernatural happenings that have to do with blood okay. that we can use as a basis okay. for our discussions. Okay. First, um, it rained blood in North Carolina in 1884. That's yeah. just a thing that happened. Okay. And it, they, a scientist in 1884 determined that it was blood. Now, it was an 1884 scientist, and they didn't know if it was human or anything. Okay. It, it was blood. Annabelle, the doll. Okay. Supposedly had blood on her hands and on her dress over her chest, and she was owned by a nursing student at this time, and supposedly this is when the nursing student took her to Ed and Lorraine Warren. Okay. Of The Conjuring fame and other fame, and Amityville Horror, etc., 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 and The Haunting of Connecticut, which was also a Ed and Lorraine Warren case and apparently blood turned red from the faucet Ooh. now i don't trust ed and lorraine warren you don't i don't i don't i listened to an episode i think it was about the haunting of connecticut from real life ghost stories and they basically explained ed and lorraine warren are uh exploitative exploitative i don't know how to pronounce that okay they're not great people who would go into vulnerable situations like these and really play up i mean they, they were supernatural aspects usually to begin with but uh-huh. then they would convince everybody to play them up a whole bunch and they would mm-hmm. make a lot of money from it i don't trust them and i haven't okay. done enough research to know if these two occurrences of blood are valid right okay um didn't have time <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah, she was finishing her notes last night Shh. No, 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 no. I had my notes. I had my research done. I was putting my thoughts together. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, The other thing is there are four degrees of possession. Okay. Like demonic possession. And the first degree, which is the simplest, easiest to get out of, is possession of a house or an object where things start to go awry with that. Like the monster house. You remember that movie? The the animated movie? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So that would be... (laughs) That's a Yulvia... (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is a girl house. Oh my god. Sorry. Yes, that counts as first degree demonic possession. Okay. Now I didn't mention bleeding, but I assume that would count. Uh <laughs> and then finally I want to bring up the author of Labyrinth 13, Kurt Kurt Rollette, called Minnie about six months after this all went down or something like that. And he asked her if he th- she thought the house was haunted, and she did not answer directly she would not answer directly but she tells me she thinks it's haunted but she's in denial or she doesn't want to say um she did say that nothing supernatural or you know with the bleeding had happened before that okay none of it had happened since that at least that she's saying and she also said that if she thought there had really been blood in the house like that they would have moved okay which she is lying yeah because they know that it was blood definitely they really know that it was blood um, at least she's lying about that. Now, I understand why she's lying. I'm not... She right. doesn't owe us anything. No, and she may be lying to herself as well as, like, yeah. a coping mechanism. That's totally possible. A lot of people seem to believe that Minnie never actually gave the full story of everything that happened in the house. Okay. Uh, and that it was actually worse than we know. Oh. And that's that's the last thing I have for this story, that... Dun, we, dun, dun. Even with all this whole thing of it bled one night, we don't know how it happened, there's also the thought that there was actually more. Right. <laughs> that we really didn't know about. Yeah. Okay. So, Zoe. Yes. We have a whiteboard. Yes. It uh, says what happened in the blooding house. Okay, I wrote bleeding and my O's look like E. My E's look like O's. <laughs> so, Zoe. Yes. I'm going to write down. Hoax. Yes. Uh, and then I have a checkbox. And then I'm going to write down true crime. A checkbox. And then supernatural. Okay. After all this discussion, I still don't freaking know what happened. What do you think? I'm showing her the, the whiteboard. Now. I think it's either there's a body in the hot water heater. Which would be true crime. Yes. Or it's the guy who died in the car accident, internal bleeding. Supernatural. Yes. Okay. Uh, Can I bring up two things to disqualify this? Because this is a never-ending triangle of things that disqualify everything else. Yes. Not because I don't believe them, but because I have no idea what's going on. Okay. Okay. So, true crime. Body in the hot water heater. Things that would have happened with that, you would have noticed 
with I think the taste and the color of water, mm-hmm. like, like with you Elisa said, Lamb. But like you said, they didn't necessarily tell the whole truth. Yes, but if they had found a body in the hot water, the police would have known about it, and I think it would have been late to the press. I don't think they found one. I think there was one. Anything they just lived in there in like another two years and never said. Yep. Okay. Okay. Body hot water. <laughs> I'm gonna put body hot water. Um, the other thing is, according to Minnie, who said that it was the hot water heater that sprayed up rusted water, mm-hmm. she said that there was not things in the heating vents. Right. Which is how it would have gotten up t- through the floor from the basement. Mm-hmm. Now that again. It was found above the heating vents, Mm -hmm. and I don't know if she would have necessarily checked the grate specifically to be like, oh, yeah, it's there, or yeah, it's not there. So, okay, that is a possibility. I'm still not exactly sure if I believe that there's a body in the hot water heater, just because, like, I think the hot water heater, it's very likely that that was involved somehow. Right. I really think that that is a possibility. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I believe... That it was a body just because that brings up issues of decomposition. Mm-hmm. And then I don't think they're the type of, from from seeing them. I have a picture of them. Do you want to see? I'm not suggesting that they murdered someone and no, put no, no, that. No, no. Okay. I'm saying I don't think they would live with the complications that a decomposing body has. <laughs> okay. With the hot water heater. Okay. Yeah. Especially when you consider the man was in such difficult living. Right. Yeah. Um, or you think it's Albert. But in this case, you're able to test the blood. Now, we don't know what kind of blood Albert had. Yeah, I was That would have been say. crazy if yeah. it was a positive. Though, again, it is the most common type. I did say I wanted us to get to a definitive answer. Now, okay, what if their alarm didn't work and somebody came in? I feel like the one of the first things the police would do was test the alarm. Okay. Okay, I think it had to do with the basement. I think something came in with the basement. Somehow blood got into the hot water heater. Mm-hmm. That... Maybe it was a body. Maybe it was something else. Blood somehow got in the hot water heater. That is what we are working with. Yes. Okay. Case not solved, but case narrowed down. <laughs> okay. Thank you for listening today. Yeah. This has been a lot. Yeah. Okay. That was, I mean, it was really interesting. It's the first to, uh, that we've done something like that, so. This really falls in the category of unsolved mystery, because I know we narrowed it down, but... It, I still ain't got a clue. Yeah. Though That's, I do think it has to do with the basement and the hot water heater. I feel so bad for that couple, though. Yeah. Um, he died two years later, Willie. Aww. And, you know, they had all the adult children came to the house, and they just kind of had, like, a quiet remembrance of him or something like Aww. that. Well, it was nice. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. It was nice. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing. Yeah. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed today's podcast, please like, subscribe, and leave us a review. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, et cetera, et cetera. Yes. And uh, like I said, we're opening our spooky submissions to be everywhere. So everybody, please submit your spooky submissions to hauntedhospitalitypodcast at gmail.com. You can see our show notes and our sources and our blog posts at hauntedhospitality.wordpress.com. Yes, and if you are in the Twitter sphere, please join us at Haunted House and on Instagram at Haunted Hospitality. We're also on Facebook at Haunted Hospitality Podcast, so not, not that might not be our official at name. I really need to find that, that that's out. That's our official at name. Oh, it is? It's just facebook.com forward slash Haunted Hospitality Podcast. Thank you. No spaces. Okay, yeah, well, uh, and also, if you have ideas about what happened in this episode, please email us or DM us, us or comment yeah. at us or tweet us or anything. Yes. I would love that because we could totally do like an an update. Yeah. 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 Woo. Oh. Yeah. Anyway. So. Stay, stay spooky. spooky.